Hey everybody, my name is James Gobb from Heirloom Fire and it is tomato season. I literally count down the days in the calendar till I get to enjoy these beautiful jewels of the summer. Personally, I love them right off of the vine. Delicious, take a big old bite off of them. To me, there's nothing better. When I'm not doing that, I love to have them in a raw salad, like a caprese salad, maybe a panzanella salad. Then you start preserving them into tomato sauce or salsa. But I wanted to take this opportunity to figure out other ways to enjoy them as we come to the close of the season. So, we have a bunch of cool equipment. We wanted to have some fun. And I wanted to think of the purest expression of the tomato and how I could actually produce that. So we're gonna have a tomato cocktail, specifically a martini. Why a martini? Because it's clean, it's pure, and I really wanted to bring out the essence of the tomato. So I wanna show you guys how to make that today. So the first step to making our tomato martini is going to be our tomato infused vodka. But way before we even get there, I wanna to talk to you about the foundation of this cocktail, and that's tomatoes. So you definitely wanna be getting local tomatoes and doing this in the summertime. Better yet, tomatoes that you grew in your own backyard. So we're gonna take a look at some conventionally grown tomatoes that were raised in California, and then a tomato that was raised in my own backyard. So we're gonna take a look at this, I wanna show you guys. So this is our conventional tomato. You can tell it was picked way underripe. You can still see the stem developing in the heart, the white flesh, the underdeveloped seeds. Now here's our garden tomato. Look at this, deep, deep red, basically ripe all the way through. Beautiful development on the seeds, nice tomato gel. This is gonna be the tomato, hands down, that we're gonna to wanna to be working with to make our vodka. So conventional wisdom would lead you to believe to put your tomatoes in a blender with your vodka. The problem with that is that you're incorporating way too much oxygen. Oxygen gives us life, but it also degrades things. Best result is to take our tomatoes, put them right into a mixing bowl, and mash them. Now you don't need to go nuts here. We're just looking to crush and get as much juice out as possible. I'm using an old sauerkraut masher, but you can actually use a potato masher for this. Okay, the next step was we're gonna put a little bit of salt in here also help us extract as much tomato juice and most importantly the essence of the tomato as well because we're really going to want to smell and taste the tomato. After this we're going to take our tomatoes we're going to place them inside of a vacuum seal bag to seal it up. So what's going to happen is we're going to use the vacuum to pull all that tomato essence out. And we're going to cook it at 160 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. Use equal parts tomatoes to vodka here. In this case, we're using two cups of vodka to two cups of crushed tomatoes. Cook tomatoes in a 160 degree water bath for one hour. After one hour of cook time, strain your tomato liquor into a vacuum flask and prepare a 110 degree Fahrenheit water bath for your still. If you don't have a rotary evaporator like this, it's no big deal. You just prepare a funnel, line it with cheesecloth, and pour your tomato liquor through that. Make sure you cover it so we don't have any of the alcohol lost through evaporation. The rotary evaporator is a neat piece of equipment that allows me to capture aroma compounds at a much lower temperature than a conventional still. It creates a thin layer from your liquid in the inside of the flask, allowing for more surface area. With the use of a high-powered vacuum pump, it allows liquids to boil at a much lower temperature. This allows us to capture the fresh essence of a tomato on a hot summer day, and not the essence of a cooked tomato vodka sauce. The tomato vapor is sucked up into a glass tube that contains a chilled condensing coil that immediately chills the air and turns the vapor back to a liquid state, a crystal clear, potent tomato-infused vodka. Okay, now it's finally time to make the cocktail. In a shaker, combine two and a half ounces of our tomato vodka, followed by a half an ounce of dry vermouth. Okay, so now we're gonna use ice in this cocktail. You can go ahead and use regular ice. I chose, because I have the vacuum still, to make a basil distillate and then freeze that into an ice cube. A little additional, you don't need to do this. To your shaker, add one smashed rocks cube. One whole ice cube. Shake vigorously until you can no longer feel either one of your arms or until the cocktail is chilled. Pour into a coupe glass, or if you're feeling that 80s vibe, a martini glass. Okay. Wow, that smells like literally walking through a tomato field. It's only missing one thing, olives. Okay, so for our tomato olives, we're gonna take our green tomatoes, and basically we're gonna make this really salty pickle brine that'll mimic some of the flavors of olives. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our water, followed by our vinegar, our sugar, salt, mustard seeds, coriander, 
whole garlic cloves, black pepper, bay leaves, and chili flakes. While our brine is coming up to a boil, we're gonna take our tomatoes and get them ready into a mason jar. Okay, so now that our brine is at a boil, we're gonna go ahead and pour this over our olives and we're gonna let it sit at least overnight, but ideally three to four days. Carefully, well, never mind. Try to get some of the brine into the jar, seal it, and store at least 24 hours. Mm, yeah, that's exactly what that cocktail needed. A little salty, briny tomato olive action. So cheers to another amazing tomato season. I would love to see what you guys are doing. So tag us on Instagram or leave a comment down below. Cheers.